Genesis chapter 3. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all the beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat it all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, and he shall rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin, and clothed them. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Galatians chapter 3. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from St. John, the 19th chapter. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in, these last days, he has to us by his Son. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every morning, we get dressed for the day ahead. 
If it's cold on, we put a coat over us. We change into the appropriate clothing before we go to work out at the gym. Clothing is such a normal part of our daily lives. It covers us, protects us, comforts us. Without clothing, we're vulnerable, exposed, embarrassed. And if you've ever seen somebody with a wardrobe malfunction, you're embarrassed for them too. Life wasn't always this way, though. There was a time when Adam and Eve were both naked and not ashamed. That's life in Genesis chapter 2. No sin, no shame, no guilt, no death. Only innocence, perfection, holiness. Only a knowledge of everything God created to give them, which he declared very good. Sadly and tragically, life didn't stay this way. Genesis 3 happened. Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Adam and Eve were exposed, vulnerable, guilty, sinful, dead, ashamed. This is what sin does. It curves our eyes inward upon ourselves. And like Adam and Eve, we try to hide behind the fig leaves of our own making. We try, don't we? We try and cover our gossip and hurtful words by excusing them. We try and cover our greed and lust by saying, I'm just get, getting what was rightfully mine and all I did was look taste. But it never works, does it? Fig leaves couldn't hide Adam and Eve's guilt and shame. And they can't hide ours either. We stand before God like Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, naked, exposed, vulnerable, and ashamed. And our sin can only be covered by one thing, not fig leaves, not even by the best money that clothing can buy. Sin can only be covered by sacrifice, by blood, by the skin of another given for you. We oftentimes think of Genesis chapter 3 as the greatest tragedy of the scriptures. God's great judgment of Adam and Eve, the serpent and all of creation. And there is judgment to be sure. There is sin, there is death, and there is a curse. But Genesis chapter 3 also reveals one of the greatest love stories of all time. God's love for sinners. Even after Adam and Eve disobeyed, ate the fruit, blamed each other, the Lord still loved them. He covered their nakedness and their shame. He clothed them. The Lord God made for Adam and for his, for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. The nakedness was covered at the cost of an even deeper nakedness. God sacrificed an innocent animal to cover their shame. And so the first death, the first bloodshed happened at the hands of the Creator Himself. Sin can only be covered by blood, by sacrifice. What animal was it? No one really knows. Many Christians throughout the Middle Ages, the time of the Reformation, painted a lamb in the garden that gave its life for Adam and Eve, pointing forward to Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, a man with skin and blood who is totally exposed for you. Behold the man scourged by the Roman soldiers with an evil flag room, which was designed to shred the skin from the back of the whip one, tearing away the flesh so deep that the internal organs are exposed. Behold the man whose head the soldiers pressed a crown of woven thorns to ridicule him as a madman. Behold the man whom they drape a soldier's dirty robe. Behold the man 
nailed to the cross, stripped naked, whose clothes the soldiers divided among themselves, whose seamless tunic was gambled away. Behold the God who is naked and exposed and shame for you. We have a beautiful picture of that naked God before us. It was a number of years ago when I first came here to Trinity that it was Reformation time and I went into Pastor Mac's office, our beloved senior pastor. I said, Tim, can we put the naked Jesus up? And he said, what? <laughs> I said, the naked Jesus. He didn't understand quite what I was getting at, but I was talking about the crucifix there. Of course, he said we can do that. There he is for you. Behold the man. Beautiful. Love for you. There Jesus bears your sin and shame. There he dies on the cross for you, unashamed, nothing to hide, no sin of his own, only bearing your sin and mine. Behold the man stripped naked to bear the world's sins, the ones that we try to hide and obscure, the ones that we pretend are not there, the ones that cause us the greatest shame and pain, all of them there on Jesus. Behold the man, stripped naked, exposed so that he might clothe you in a new skin. Behold the man who will hide your sin with his own righteousness. Behold the man who gives you himself to wear, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ Jesus have put on Christ. In the washing of baptism you are clothed in the perfection of his righteousness. Jesus, our new Adam, covers our sin with his bloody sacrifice and death. Your sin is gone. Your guilt is removed. And your shame covered forever in the blood of Jesus for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith to Christ Jesus to life everlasting.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Matthew, our synod president, John, our district president, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Joseph, our president, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, o Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray.